Number seven is dealing with vegan food for dogs at the city shelters. Um, I want to stress this is not a vote on the merits of that. This is a vote to support the uh, animal services decision to do a study regarding the uh, feasibility feasibility of it. And um, once the decision is made on this, and it's the Board of Animal Services Commissioners that makes this decision. This is not a city council decision, okay? It's, it's the board that does it. Most of what we do involves city council decisions, and we do input into that, but this is the Board of Animal Services Commissioner. Now, when um, it does come down to the merits on this, we can either support it or oppose it or take no position at all, but at this point, we're just asking uh, for a feasibility study to be done. So let me read the resolution. Uh, discussion of possible motion, resolve the Tarzana Neighborhood Council Animal Welfare Committee, request that the TNC Board pass a resolution supporting the Los Angeles Board of Animal Services Commissioner's recommendation that the Department of Animal Services report back with a feasibility analysis presenting the benefits and risks of providing an association of American feed control officials approved plant-based diet for shelter dogs. Okay? <clears throat> I'll move uh, the adoption of this. Who would like to second it? Mary, when do you want to move? Okay, Mary. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's get it on the table first. Okay. And Mary. Okay. Yes. What's this feasibility going to cost us? Um. Eight hundred thousand. No, it's not. Uh, Roger, you may know the answer on this. Approximately zero dollars. In between zero dollars and nothing. <laughs> Why? <coughs> because all that's happening is that the department is compiling information that's sent into them, and that's it. Yeah. So, and, and, and everybody here, if they would like to, can send in um, information about it. <clears throat> and then the commissioners will then get, get all that information and will review it. Um, but we, you know, it's the type of thing where uh, we're just trying to understand what the lay of the land is. Um, and what studies are already out there, but we're not commissioning the study. That would, well, that would cost money. We're not paying somebody to look into it. We're just mm -hmm. like, so it will cost the taxpayers nothing. I have a question. Sure. What is the background on this? Why is this? Why has this come up? Is it is wrong? Go ahead. Okay, sure. Well, um, <clears throat> first of all, if you don't mind, a little just a slight preamble. Um, I just want to thank you all for doing this and. Um, you know, in this period, I, I used to work in the United States Senate. I've been chief counsel for U.S. senators. And right now, for me as a Democrat, it's a very depressing time politically. Uh, but when I see things like this, communities coming together and talking about issues, and when I see the you know, animal rights community show up here you know, in full force uh, just because of this issue is being talked about and it matters to us, I find it truly inspiring. So I really want to thank you for your attention. Uh, the way that this came about was uh, about three months ago. Um, I just, uh, I, for the first time after four years serving as a Commissioner of Animal Services for Los Angeles, I finally took a look at our charter. And the charter of the Department of Animal Services for the City of Los Angeles, which is the second largest shelter system in the world and the second largest, <coughs> the second largest um, city in the country, the charter ha it assigns commissioners like myself and the department to protect the rights of all animals, not just shelter animals, not just companion animals. And there's also the fact that in our shelters we take in chickens, we take in turkeys, we take in ducks, you know, um, and we take care of them and we make sure that they survive. And it just occurred to me, well, why are we then feeding meat-based food to shelter dogs because shelter dogs are omnivores. 
and they can thrive on plant-based diets. In fact, my dog right there is a little plant-based dog. He doesn't, eat, you know, he, he doesn't he doesn't eat any. Uh, cook is vegan. Cook is for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, why would we kill or support the killing of animals that don't have to die in order to food dogs that, are, that, that, are, um, that can thrive on a plant-based diet? It was really simple. And then I reached out to a couple of plant-based dog food companies like Halo and, uh, and V-Dog, and they offered to match the exact same prices that we currently pay at the Los Angeles shelters for, um, for meat-based dog food. And, uh, and right now, the Los Angeles shelters have 33,000 animals and dogs in the shelters every year. And they feed them 336,000 pounds of meat-based food. And that's a lot of cows, a lot of chickens, a lot of animals that are dying unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Now, I have no issue whatsoever with anybody choosing to feed their dogs meat if that's what they, if that's what they decide. I mean, I would like them to look at what they think is healthiest for the dog and what's healthiest for the planet and what's healthiest for the community. They can make their own choices. But as a commissioner of animal services for Los Angeles, it's a, man, it's a managerial commission. We actually have control over the department. We have responsibility to give them our best work. I don't think we have a choice, but at the very least to study it. And um, all the commissioners on the commission agree. So they, we voted for it unanimously. Uh, now, there's been opposition on the other side. There's, there's people who make money off of feeding meat to dogs and, you know, God love them. If that's what, how they want to make their living, if that's what they believe in, they get to do it. Um, but they're very opposed to this initiative because they're concerned, I think, about the general population starting to realize that dogs don't have to eat meat. Now, they can. If anybody chooses to, that's fine. But they can do just beautifully. In fact, they have lower incidences of cancer. They have lower incidences of aller aller allergenic reactions when they eat plant-based food. But, um, you know, that's, that's all kind of almost beside the point. Um, what really matters is, as the Department of Animal Services, we can't be killing animals unnecessarily. We can't do it, it's in our charter. So anyway, that's the initiative. Um, it actually was, was positioned to pass the commission, um, but then we decided to slow it down a little bit and do a feasibility study, and really just have a pilot program in one of the shelters, perhaps, where we feed um, plant-based food to dogs and see how it works. And uh, the community has risen up to support it in a really beautiful way. And people like Dr. Almighty May, who is a veterinarian, um, have given us tremendous information. And she's actually here with one pager. And tremendous, active, passionate people, like one of your committee members over here, um, have risen to this. And it's inspired them. And members of the community of prominence have spoken up about it. And I, can, I can't guarantee it. But I have a suspicion that my, my longest friend in life, <laughs> um, Council Member Bob Blumenfield, might support it as well. But um, we're going to show up at his house probably sometime this weekend and maybe lean on him a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's, uh, is that enough? Uh, I probably spoke wrong with that. Show. And uh, you know, I'm sure other, other things will come up. And there's so. other people here who have more yeah. experience than me, including Dr. Matt. Okay. And All right. So um, that's. that's uh, if it, are you going to have to leave? Yeah. Well, okay. Before I leave, I want to know, know what your vote's going to be on it, okay? Or the Okay. And yes. And they're going to talk about the merits of it, but we're just voting on supporting the study. But I, I, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of this already, but I'd like to hear it, and, and it's, it's really something good to hear. So, um, Dr. May, would you like to yeah, thank go ahead you. with your presentation? Sure. So, my name is Armighty May. I'm a practicing veterinarian here in Los Angeles. I've been practicing for over 12 years, and I used to practice at sleep at the hospital in Reseda, very close to Tarzan. I was there for about 20 months. So. I appreciate the opportunity to address all of you tonight. And I'd like to go over some of the common misconceptions that some people have about plant-based diets and hopefully educate people that are concerned about any issues pertaining to that. Roger mentioned that the cancer is an ep epidemic and more than ever we're seeing cancer in dogs, like close to 50% of dogs are dying from cancer now. 
And that's in large part due to some of the toxic ingredients in meat-based foods. There are very large numbers of carcinogenic substances such as arsenic, mercury, heavy metals, as well as persistent organic pollutants such as dioxins, DDT, PCBs, and many other toxic chemicals which are highly concentrated in animal tissue due to bioaccumulation. That means that even the organic meats are filled with these toxins. Now, it was different 50 years ago, but in the, the world that we live in today, it is simply impossible to get away from these toxic chemicals in meat products. And what's being fed currently in the shelters is Canaday, which is actually a meat meal, <coughs> that is comprised of various body parts, some of which wouldn't be fit for human consumption. Chicken meal being the first ingredient. And, and chicken is the chief reservoir for arsenic, which is a group one carcinogen. So I'd like to uh, share some the international, international Yes, that's right. <coughs> and also the International Agency for Research on Cancer considers it a group one or class one carcinogen. So that means it's very carcinogenic. Dogs are omnivores, they're not carnivores. That means that they can process plant foods just as they can meat foods. And since there are so many toxins in the meat ingredients, the plant foods are actually healthier for them. And they can meet all their nutrient requirements from plant-based ingredients. They don't have requirements for specific ingredients, as long as their nutrient requirements are met, which can be met through plant, mineral, and synthetic sources. A, a few people have been concerned about the possibility of diarrhea, but that is something that can be dealt with. It's a very minor issue compared to the incidence of cancer and other problems that dogs suffer from on meat-based foods. Plus, most of the time when they have the diarrhea, it's because of a higher fat diet being introduced. And in this case, it would actually be a lower fat diet that's being fed. So that's not likely to be a major issue. I do have some testimonials I wanted to play so we can uh, dim the lights. And actually, I also want to mention that Dr. Richard Pitcairn has, he's a veterinarian who's been in practice for 50 years. And he and his wife, Susan Pitcairn, updated the edition, the fourth edition of uh, the book uh, is available now. It's Dr. Pitcairn's Complete Guide to Natural Care for Dogs and Cats. And in this book, he details a lot of information about the toxins in the meat-based foods, and he has a lot of uh, plant-based recipes in here. And he is someone who has changed his position. That's why he updated his book to the fourth edition just last year, just last March, actually. Before that, the, the previous editions highlighted much more meat-based recipes. And upon looking into the data, which he learned about through watching a film called Cowspiracy, which is a really informative documentary you can watch on Netflix about the environmental devastation that's brought on by the meat and dairy industries. It, it, it actually made him go vegan. He and his wife went vegan after they watched that film. That was about three years ago, and it compelled them to update the edition of their book to include this important information. There's also been a concern raised about possible urine crystals and or stones, but actually certain breeds, and there are very few breeds that are affected by this, there are small breed dogs, and they're not dogs that you commonly see in the shelter system, for one thing. But actually there's no evidence to suggest that dogs that are on plant-based diets are any more at risk for bladder stones than dogs who are on meat-based diets. So uh, that is, is really not an issue in the actual reality of what we're dealing with. Another concern that has been raised is the taste of the food. People have said, well, what about you know, feeding them what they want to eat? However, when we look at what's healthy, it may not be the tastiest, necessarily, although it is tasty enough, as you'll see when we show these videos. The important thing is that it's a healthy food that promotes health and well-being. And whether or not it's what their wolf ancestors ate is not relevant to what's happening today in our world. And dogs have genes for digestion of carbohydrates, much more so than wolves do. They have adapted, they've evolved, they've lived with humans for over 10,000 years now, and they can easily digest carbohydrates. 